moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Darren Estelle, yes, there is a, co a coincidental uh, similarity in the last name, is the daughter of Diana Estelle. Go figure. She's 16 and a junior at Plainfield East High School. Go Bengals. She loves writing fantasy and horror. She also enjoys art, music, and animals. She has two hamsters, Waffles and Nala, 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 a gecko named Sandy, and a goldfish named Gumbo, which is probably also a prophecy. She hopes to be an animal rescuer one day, and tonight she is going to read something for us. I did not get the title. It's called Possessed. It's called Possessed. All right, Gary and Estelle. Here, I've read the first chapter of my book. This is the third one. I actually finished the second one. So, okay. There you go. The house. The old, lifeless house. The old, lifeless looking house came into view. I walked onto the lawn with a steady pace. My feet squished into the freshly soaked grass. The smell of mulch and vapor filled my nostrils. Oh, how I love the outdoors. The sky, pitch black, like a black soft blanket, covering everything in sight. The moon, full over, the, the moon, full and white, as a glass of milk, sitting still, watching over us like the guardian of the sky, my guardian. I reached the porch. My, my cold hands ran across the rough wood, feeling every atom, every texture I could make out. I felt individual raindrops hugging my hands. They would not leave me alone. My feet pressed against the steps of the porch. The steps squeaked and yelled. They were crying to me. I felt Liam behind me. I could feel the warmth of his reassuring breath. I reached the top of the porch. I was face to face with the door. The door that kept the forgotten souls secure. But there's one thing I did not forget about them. I turned around to Liam. It was, he was staring at the door. As if the door put him in a trance. What if they are home? Liam questioned. Don't worry, they won't be. Besides, it's dark in the house, I said as I looked through the, the window. What if you pass out again? I won't, Liam, I know. I won't, Liam. I know what's coming, I reassured him. My hand reached out for the doorknob, the shiny doorknob. As I twisted it to the right, the door revealed its secret lair, the place where the souls are being held against their will. I opened it halfway and peeked my head inside, my eyes wandering to the left and the right, examining the couches, the stairs, the whole package. I tried to hear any noises, noises of conscious human beings, but I heard nothing. There was complete silence. Okay, come on, I whispered to Liam as I motioned for him to follow my lead. I walked through the front door and stood firmly on the wooden floor. When Liam passed all the way through, the door immediately slammed shut. Me and Liam both flinched. Uh-oh, that can't be good, Liam claimed with a bit of worry in his voice. I walked forward to find a narrow hallway leading to the kitchen. On the left was a small dining table with a little chandelier above it. On the right was a pair of sofas with a TV straight ahead of them. I grabbed my flashlight out of my purse. My thumb pressed on the switch to turn it on. The light of the flashlight guided me through the hall hallway. As I walked through the hallway, narrow hallway, I noticed the wallpaper bits and pieces of it falling to its death like flower petals, dancing all the way down to the crisp patch of grass in the autumn. I turned to the right side of the hallway, and my flashlight led me to a very peculiar array of photos. Three photos linked arms next to each other, creating no space between them. In the photo on the far left, there was a little infant nestled in her mother's arm, a tiny brown curl peeking out of her pink, peeking out, peeking out of her pink hat, which had a delicate satin pink ribbon on it. Her crystal blue eyes met with mine. I ran my thumb down the perfectly polished brown wooden frame, carefully feeling the texture and staring at the cute little bundle of joy. The little infant had soft pink rosy cheeks and gorgeous cheekbones. Oh, how the mother must have admired her. The mother held the little bundle as if she was securing her little baby for the world. My eyes traveled to the next photo. This time, her dad came into view. With his hands on the back seat of the little girl's tricycle, he had his contagious smile on his face, which matched with the little girl's facial expression. Her hands had held tight onto the handle of ours, staring into the distance, 
her hair in two evenly parted ponytails. Wearing a white sundress and matching white closed toed shoes. She wore two white socks, but one of them wrinkled down. What? The leaves of the trees were a bright green. They set up daffodils on each side of the sidewalk. At last, my eyes met the last photo on the far right side. It was the little girl, just the little girl. Only this time, she wasn't so little anymore. She looked as if she could be in fifth grade at the time. Her hair lay down and slept on her shoulder. She wore a funny looking hat and gown, a blue gown. She held a frame in between her hands. Inside the frame was a piece of paper with such fine print. I squinted my eyes to get a better look at the print. Rosie May, class of, and that's all it said. Rest was smush, but how? I thought to myself. How? I wondered out loud. How what? Liam asked as he walked over to me. Well, look at this photo, I stammered as I pointed to the frame on the far right. Well, what about it? Look, Liam, it doesn't say when she graduated, I claimed. Well, why does it matter? Liam questioned. Well, now that I think about it, she looks sort of familiar, but I can't put my finger on it, I said frustrated. Well, wait a minute, Coke, isn't that the same gown we wore when we graduated fifth grade? Liam wondered. I gasped and cut my hand over my mouth. There's something freaky going on here, Liam said, shaking. <laughs> I have to wait till next year to hear chapter four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finished with the chapter. I have another chapter. I have the other half of the chapter. Read so I'm okay. I'm gonna read one later. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah.